Now, I'm going to share the message right now. If someone asks you this question, how? The question will be, are you blind? If I ask you, turn to the person next to you says, are you blind? If someone asks you that, how would you answer? I'm sure most of us looking at the person saying, are you crazy? You know, what do you mean? I am blind. Did you see that I can see? Because you all believe we can see. Now, if you are a Christian, and if you know the amazing grace, then you might answer this way, I once was blind, but now I see. If you are a Christian, if you know you can see, what do you see? Whom do you see? We are studying the book of John, chapter 9. And this chapter is about that Jesus healed this born blind a man. Man was born blind. And then how the various people respond to that miracle. Right? And we studied from chapter 9, verses 1 through 12 last Sunday. And then it started with a question by Jesus' disciples of the reason of being blind. And then the way Jesus healed this man, and then neighbor's reaction, right? Now, today, today we're going to talk about verses 13 through 41. It's a lot of verses out there. Now, these are reactions of Pharisees and the man's parents and then a man himself. So let's think about that. And I'm going to read those scriptures slowly and just imagine the whole situation. After Jesus healed this man, and neighbors got the reaction. Their reaction was not something we expect. And then they brought this man to Pharisees. So starting in verse 13, start with this. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Remember that. It was a Sabbath day he just did. In the verse 15, so the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and I watched, and I see conversation between Pharisees and this blind man. And how this blind man responds to the Pharisees' question. Verses 16 through 17 is the Pharisees' reaction. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such a sign? And there was a division among them. Remember that. And then 17, so they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? Talk about Jesus Christ, right? He said he is a prophet. Now, rest of the 4, 18 through 23 is the reaction. Okay? And by the parents of this man blind. Because the verse 18 says, The Jews did not believe that he had been, uh, been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight. So he, they, the Pharisees, brought this blind man to his parents and asked them, Is this your son? Who do you say, who, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son, that he was born blind. But now he now sees, we do not know. How he, do not, how he now sees, we do not know. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of his age. He will speak for himself. An explanation why they said that? Verse 22, his parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogues. And therefore, his parents said, he's of his age. Ask him. Verse 24, to the rest of them, is a conversation between this man and the Pharisees. So for the second time, they called the man who had been, born, been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner, Jesus Christ. He answered, Where is he is a, uh, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know, I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? 
He answered them, I have told you already that if you are, and you will not listen, why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? That's his man said. Verse 28, they reviled him saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. This is what Pharisee said. And the man answered, verse 30, why? This is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. Verse 31, and we know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God, does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of man born blind. This blind man, a formerly blind man, was teaching the Pharisees here. If the, this man were not from God, he could not, he could do nothing. And verse 34 says, they answered him, you were born in an utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. So there's a conversation between the Pharisees and this man, an almost an argument. And then verse 35 to verse 41 is the conversation between Jesus and this man. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? I believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see, and those who, may, who see may become blind. And then this Pharisee shows up, and some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, are, you, are we also blind? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. Amen. Now, this conversation between those people and the reaction of those people are the ones that we need to think about. Verse this is from 1 to 12 is a neighbor's reaction. They witnessed it, the almost, almost amazing miracle in their life, the Blind man sees again. But the reaction of those neighbors was not something we would expect. There was no such thing as a joy or excitement. It was more disbelief. So they decided to bring this man to Pharisees and say, Okay, he said that, that he, was bo- uh, he, he was born blind. Now he can see. We don't believe him. What about you? So let's think about the Pharisees' response. And let's think about this man's parents' response. And then lastly, we're going to learn from this formerly man, blind man's response. Those response from Pharisees and the parents are the ones we want to avoid. We don't want to respond that way. We want to respond to this miracle like this formerly born blind. There's a five different reactions you can see the Pharisees. First one is disbelief, just like the neighbors the Pharisees' the reaction was disbelief. Verse 15, the Pharisee says, uh, the, the verse 15 says, So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. Now, Pharisees heard how Jesus healed him. Because those neighbors brought this man to Pharisees, they probably explained, Hey, this is what we heard. So they heard, but they still asked him once again. And this man explained, that he put mud on my eyes and I watched it and I see. So the reason the Pharisees asked him twice because they could not believe. Now verse 18 says, even after this man explained how Jesus healed him, the Jews did not believe. Now this time, it's not that they did not believe that this man was healed. They are questioning whether he was born blind. That he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parent of the man who had received his sight. So they decide to, be, to have some proof. For, okay, let's take him to his parents. So whether the parents are going to say whether he got healed that way, right? So they took this man to the parents because they did not believe him. Verse 19, they asked his parents, Is this your son who you say was born blind? And how then does he now see? It doesn't make sense. 
We cannot believe in verse 26 after parents said, we do not know. And they says, why did he do that to you? How did he open your eyes? They kept on asking questions because of disbelief. First reaction, Pharisees, disbelief. First, second reaction is a confusion, right? Verse 16 says, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. So part of the Pharisees said, wait a minute, this cannot be God. This cannot be someone from God. And then, but others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such a signs? And there was a division among them. So second reaction was confusion, right? And third reaction is accusation. The Pharisees, what did, they, what did they say to Jesus? You're a sinner, verse 24. So for the second time, they called the man who had been born blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. Why did they call Jesus a sinner? Verse 14 explained that now it was a Sabbath day that Jesus made the mud and open his eyes because on Sabbath day, nobody should work. And the fact Jesus healed this man, they consider that Jesus worked. That means that Jesus did not keep the Sabbath. So because of he did not keep the Sabbath, Jesus is a sinner. Accusation, right? Even we know that the, the, what the definition of Sabbath and who is the owner of Sabbath and all what Jesus is teaching, but they did not realize that. So because of the, accu uh, the, the accusation, then they show how ignorant they were. The fourth reaction was ignorance. The verse 2 explained this, right? It said, the four Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Why did they decide that? Because they were ignorant of who Jesus Christ was. If they knew Jesus was Christ, obviously they would not make that decision, right? So they had all so this confusion, and then they accused Jesus as a sinner, and they were ignorant. Okay. And the verse 28 continue, and the, uh, uh, they reviled him and saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. When they argue with this blind man, or formerly blind man, and they did not want to be taught this man. I mean, what this man was explaining was the most amazing thing. So what they said, verse 29, We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for the, this man, we do not know where he comes from. It's not, when they try to explain the, their behavior, they actually confess their ignorance. We don't know where Jesus comes from. So even though they don't know where Jesus comes from, they just decide, call the Jesus as a sinner. The last reaction is a pride, right? Because they did not want to hear from this formerly blind man something, they did not realize it, they cast him out, right? When the, 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 this formerly blind man explained about Jesus Christ and what he did, verse 34 says, they answered him, you are born in all sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out, pride. So those reactions we can see from the Pharisees is something that we have to be careful. Right? What about the parents' reaction? Is it one? It's very simple. It's a fear. Right? They behave, they reacted because of fear. See, parents saw their son. These Pharisees brought this formerly blind man to his parents to ask, Is this your son? Now, when parents saw him, and his, their son were, was able to see, most of us will react like, wow, son, how can you see this? It's amazing. No, they didn't behave that way because they were in fear. So when this, the Pharisees asked them, hey, is this your son? They could lie because of fear that, oh, no, he's not our son. Or they could lie. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was not born blind, but they didn't have that courage. So, we're in verse 21, but how he we do not know. See, this is how they behave. They use the car called, we do not know car. Yeah. He's our son. He was born blind. We cannot lie about that. 
But how he can see? Oh, sorry. He's too old. He knows. I don't know. We don't know about that. See, but how he sees, we don't know. Nor do we know that who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. Verse 24, 22 explains, because his parents said these things because they feared the Jews. Remember that, that the rules they made. They feel to confess Jesus is Christ, then you will be kicked out. So I don't want to deal with any kind of thing with Jesus Christ. And then verse 23 says, therefore his parents said, he's of his age. Ask him. Now, this is the response that we have to be careful of that. Now, this is a lesson that I know Pastor uh, Jonathan wants to say. What about us, right? Next one. What about us? I like that. What about us? You know, the, one of these the fat pastors in this area, and his thing is a so what kind of thing, right? What about us? Okay. We do not want to learn from the reaction of the Pharisees. We do not want to learn from the reaction of parents. But we do want to learn from this formerly blind man's reaction. How did he respond? Five different things he did, right? He was obedient to Christ. He was appreciated to Jesus Christ. He was amazed by Jesus Christ, and that he was courageous for Jesus Christ, and he was teachable by Jesus Christ. Now, this a lot, but this is how he was able to see. First is that he was obedient to Jesus Christ. Just, to, just to listen carefully of how he responds. Verse 15, go back, right? So Pharisees again ask him, this is like for sin, and how he had received his sight. Right? When all the Pharisees look at him and saying, hey, who healed you? How did it happen? Have you been in any kind of situation or like circumstance you stand before people and you feel guilty even though you haven't done anything wrong? Like just because of all these people looking at you and just like looking at you with the eyes, they were like, okay, I'm going to get you kind of way. Like, okay, I'm nervous, right? So this man could be nervous. This man could say, oh, I don't know what to say. But he wasn't. When they asked how he got his sight back, he said to them, he put mud on my eyes and I washed and I see. He just did say exactly how it happened. But when he says, that he put mud on my eyes, that he did not know who Jesus was. He did not know. He couldn't even see Jesus Christ because he's blind. But he allowed Jesus to touch him. He allowed Jesus to come and work in him. Now, none of us were born blind. None of us have even experienced being blind. Or even not even temporary based. So we don't know how he would feel with someone that he didn't know well and coming toward him and trying to touch his eyes. Okay. He could be really nervous. Like, what are you doing? Who are you? Why are you touching this? And what is it? This, this, this sticky stuff. What is that? See, he, he could wonder. He could Ask. He could just like, wait a minute, no. But not only he allowed Jesus to touch him, but he listened to Jesus. Jesus, after he put the mud in his eyes, okay, go. And then wash yourself in the pool of the solom. Like, what? you asking me to just wash myself, go all the way, I'm blind. Go all the way to wash myself? He listened. He didn't question. He didn't say, I don't understand. He didn't say, why are you asking me? But he was obedient. Christ. When is the last time you obey Jesus Christ even though you are not sure what Jesus is asking? Jesus, I don't get it. Why are you asking me to do this? When my brother told me that um, I want to be a missionary, I said, oh, great. Okay. Where do you want to go? To Egypt. I said, Egypt? Do you know anybody there? Oh, uh, not really. Why? I don't know. I've been praying. I work with people from many different countries in South Carolina, North Carolina, and then I really uh, assured that I was called to go out in different countries and go mission. I could go Vietnam I, or Thailand. I could go uh, some other countries that he was familiar with, that he knows as missionaries. He's been praying, and they said, how about Egypt? So it's like Egypt came to my heart, and it's just like, oh, I, I want to go to Egypt. I'm sure a lot of missionaries have that kind of like, testimony. Say, I don't know, but he, God, Jesus, just told me. 
When is the last time you allow Jesus to touch you? Touch your deepest wound. Touch your deepest scar. When is the last time you allow Jesus to touch you so Jesus can heal you? When is the last time that you can say, I've got healed because I obeyed what Jesus said? Wouldn't it be nice and wonderful if we had that kind of testimony as a Christian? We normally ask, like, I want to understand everything. So I will not do something that if I don't really understand fully. But sometimes, and many times to somebody, some people, that God asks us to do something that we don't fully understand. This man was obedient, obedient to Christ to enough that he allowed Jesus to touch him, to work with him, and work in him, and then obey, listen to him, to wash himself, to experience the power of healing. We just pray for um, uh, uh, Paula, that none, none of us can even feel what she was, is going through right now. But I can imagine if she seems to have strong faith in Christ that I don't get it. I don't understand. Why? I'm 22 years old. Why do I have to lose sight? I'm sure many of us could have something like that. Maybe not about sight, but about things happening in our life. I don't get it, Lord. And I do. I pray, Lord, I don't get it. But because I obey Christ, that I can experience His healing power. And I hope we all have that testimony in our pocket that we can encourage others. Allow Jesus to touch you. Allow Jesus to heal you. Experience His healing power. Be obedient to Christ. And second, is this man was appreciated to Jesus. Okay? Go back in the verse 25. Okay? This is his answer. He's constantly answering, right? He's coming and then answering to Pharisee questions after questions. And uh, these Pharisees come to him and say, this is the a sinner. How can this sinner can heal you? It doesn't make sense. And then he says, whether he's a sinner, I do not know. But one thing I know, I, I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. One thing I know is that who I was and that who I am now. One thing I know is what Jesus did to me. He was not talking about what he did. He was not talking about, oh, because I washed myself. Because I, you know, listened to Jesus and I got healed. No, he was focusing on what Jesus did. It's an amazing experience I experienced because what Jesus has done. He gave the credit to Christ. Many times when we experience amazing things, miracles, that we focus on that miracle. We're focusing on, on sometimes ourselves. This is what I experienced. But this man didn't do that. We have to be careful. This is not what I experienced, but this is what Jesus allowed me to experience. He gave the credit to Jesus, right? He was appreciative of Christ because he touched me, because he told me to go. Now, I see. This is what I have. Thank you, Jesus, for... Can you just fill out this blank? Thank you, Jesus, for something. I want to challenge all of us to write that every day. Thank you, Jesus, for... And then just 10, 20, 30, 50 items. Thank you, Jesus, for making me as a new person. We say this a lot. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Yes, we do as a Christian. I mean, if you don't believe that you cannot be called Christian. But that's not all. 
What Jesus has done for us, what Jesus is doing for you, and what Jesus will do for you is not just dying on the cross. There's so much more. And I hope we can gather those treasures each day. Thank you, Jesus, for give credit to Christ. Now, when you watch sports, and I love sports playing, and especially in that football, and maybe other sports too, when they make touchdowns or great play, you know what they do? They do this, right? I don't know who started, and I don't know whether they're finger pointing to, you know, God they believe, you know, whether it's Jesus Christ or somebody. But one thing is, no matter what they do, they are giving credit to somebody, right? You know, someone else. I did this wonderful catch. I threw this great pass, but I'm going to give you this credit to someone because there's someone who gave me this capability, ability to be able to perform, to someone who gave me this opportunity, someone gave me this moment to experience. So I praise. Be appreciated. Right? Third response is be amazed by it. Verse 30, the man answered once again, right? This is what's going between Pharisees and this man. And the, the Pharisees constantly saying that well, this man is a sinner. Jesus did not keep the Sabbath. He is a sinner. He cannot perform this. He cannot be from God in all things. And then he says, why? Why? This means it's amazing. Like, wow, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where it comes from. But yet he opened my eyes. Who is this person? Verse 31, we know that God does not listen to sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Just think about what he did and just understand what's happening. How can he not from God? Because God only listens to his worshipers and does to whoever does his will. Verse 32, never since the whole world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of the man born blind. Now, why is man so shocked and amazed by it? Because of the fact that they have not heard this. Nobody, in, as far as they know, in the history of human life, that blind man could see. Right? He was amazed by what Jesus did. And I'm amazed by what he said. Are you amazed by what Jesus has done for you? When you read the scripture, are you amazed by what Jesus is showing to us by touching people's lives 2,000 years ago? When you say, thank you, Jesus, are you really amazed by it? Or just like, well, thank you, and I can move on with my life. If you're really amazed by what Jesus has done, that will remain in you for many, many days and years. Even those little accomplishments you do will stay with you for a long time. I've done this. I built this house. You know, uh, yesterday was the um, um, uh, church work day, right? And um, some of us came and uh, we took the uh, deck outside of small sanctuary out, right? And then and we saw we took picture. Right? Hey, this is what we've done. You know, great job. But nobody else was cheering for us. You know, okay, you know, God is watching us. Yeah, you know, people would do that. You know, six of us, like, wow. It's like the, the football players are playing. The, the, the stadium is the 50 or 100,000 people. Uh, the people can sit, but now nobody's watching. They still go, like, yeah, we've done that. And it will stay with us. It will stay with me for a while. Even though it's just a little thing, but we took it out and we sweated together and we worked together. We help each other. We cheer each other. Hey, that's a great thing. There's a lot more work to be done, but it's okay. We've done it. Even if it's a little tiny thing in our life can stay with us, but if you're amazed by what Jesus has done for you and for the whole world, then you should stay with you all the time that I am amazed by him. Like, wow. One thing for sure, if you are not amazed by what Jesus has done, you cannot impress other people. 
by what you believe. What Jesus is asking you and me to do is that I want other people to see your faith and they will be amazed by your faith because we believe what Jesus has done. He was amazed by God, Jesus Christ. And fourth reaction is be courageous for Jesus. You know what this amazement, amazement, right? Amazing thing that this is important because that will give us courage to be courageous for Christ. This man was so courageous when he was talking to Pharisees. All these Pharisees looking at them had so much power, authority, and they could kick him out. Eventually they did, but he didn't care. He was just explaining to them. He was just telling them. He was teaching them. Verse 27, he answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? I mean, this is amazing. And he said, do you also want to become his disciples? I mean, he was challenging them. And then verse 33 says, if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. If you are afraid, you will not be able to say this to those Pharisees. He didn't care what's going to happen to him. Hey, I was blind, now I can see it. He was courageous for Christ. How, when was the last time that you were so courageous for Christ? When was the last time you put yourself in a situation that you have to be courageous for Christ? Most of us will try to avoid that. I know I do. We don't want to put ourselves in any kind of situation that we have to be courageous for Christ. So we don't have much of testimony. I risk my life for Christ. I risk my career for Christ. I risk my relations for Christ. I was courageous for Christ, and this man was. And the fifth reaction was teachable. He got kicked out. He was cast out of synagogue. You get out. Now, this is a conversation between Jesus Christ and this formerly born blind. Verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered, And who is he? Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? He had an open-minded person. And in verse 37, he, Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. This is a teachable. Do you think Jesus came to him and healed this man who was born blind to heal him, physical, just give him physical sight? Do you think that's all Jesus wanted to do? Then Jesus would not come after him after he was cast out of the synagogue. The verse 35 says that Jesus heard that they had cast him out and having found him. Jesus found him. He did not. This man who was born blind did not find Jesus. Jesus found him to heal him, not only physically, but spiritually. The main goal for Jesus is to give him spiritual sight. Just like Jesus called his disciples, give them the spiritual sight. Jesus called you and me to give us a spiritual sight. This is the main goal. That is why Jesus went after him after he was cast out. Right. Jesus wanted to give him the spiritual sight to be able to see far beyond what we can see with our eyes. Someone says this, the Jews cast him out of the temple and the Lord of the temple found him. The Jews cast him out of the temple. They kicked him out, right? And the Lord of the temple, Jesus Christ, found him. Now this man who was formerly blind not only can see God's creation, but Jesus himself. Now he can see Jesus himself. The blindness became a sight, the faith became a faith, and the darkness became a light. How did this, this man encounter with Jesus? Just think about the, all the verses. First time this man met Jesus Christ was when he was blind. So verse 11, 
he called Jesus as the man. He answered, what? The people, neighbors are asking him, okay, who healed you? How did it happen? The man called Jesus, made mud and anointed my eyes, and said to me, so the man healed me. I don't know who Jesus is, but the man named Jesus. In the verse 17, it got changed to prophet. So they said again to the blind man, the Pharisees this time, what do you say about him? Since he has opened your eyes, he said, he is a prophet. And then verse 38, I just read, Jesus became Lord, that he believed and he worshipped. See, this is how it happens to most of us. When Jesus comes to us, he comes to us as a man. I've heard about this man. I heard about this man 2,000 years ago. I don't know him, but this man, and after you learn about Jesus Christ, he becomes a prophet. He is a good teacher. He is a great man. He's not just a man. He's a prophet. He knows God all that. Now, eventually, when you truly fall in love with him, then he becomes the Lord that we worship. You are here today to worship Jesus, I hope. Because you are not going to be here today unless you have faith. Because there's no worship without faith. And then when you have faith in Jesus Christ and you worship Jesus, the only way you can do that is when you have spiritual sight. Not everybody who is sitting in the Sunday worship are true believers yet. You are in progress. I don't know, is Jesus a man to you? Or is Jesus a prophet to you? Or is Jesus, is Jesus a Lord to you? And if Jesus is a Lord to you, and you have true faith in Christ, then you are truly worshiping Him. And the only way is to receive the gift from Jesus, just like this man, through the Holy Spirit, to have this spiritual side open. This is why the verse 39, Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. How can we have this spiritual sight? When we realize we are blind. I was blind before Jesus touched me. We were blind before, before Jesus came to our life. And when you realize you are blind, then Jesus will open your eyesight. But the Pharisees, they thought they see or they could see. And that's verse, verse 40, that some of Pharisees near him heard these things and said to them, said to him, are we also blind? No, we're not. Listen to what Jesus said to them. If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. Because when you believe you can see, even though you cannot really, then you're not going to be able to realize you need a Savior. I put this as a true blindness. Are you blind? I was. Do, are you blind? I am sometimes, even now. When I do not focus on Christ, I become a blind man again. As long as I lose the focus on Christ, I become a blind man again. I hope and pray that all of us can say, we now can see. The question, what do you see? Do you see Jesus? In your neighbors, in your family? Do you see kingdom of heaven? Do you see the lost spirit? Then you can see then you're not blind anymore. Let's become a church.
Jesus' disciple. Whom? People who can see what Jesus wants us to see. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. This morning, this worship, this gathering, this church, this life, we know this life is not a long one. We know this life is a journey. And we know that the eternal one is waiting for us. But until we get there, Lord, until you return to this world, help us to live our life as people who can see. We need to realize how blind we can be and how much more we need to see. Help us be touched by Christ so we can truly see it's the most amazing the creation of yours. Please do not let anybody walk away from this worship without knowing, without realizing that we need the Savior, Christ, who died for us, who is resurrected in three days, and to promise to come and return. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ, my friend.